Hi, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation. Tonight, we are joined by the edible garden girl, Hilary Schwab, and tonight she will be teaching us all about zucchini and zucchini blossoms, as well as demonstrating her zesty zucchini recipes. Reminder, please remain muted during the presentation. You can send any questions you have throughout in the chat. And as always, there will be an opportunity at the end to unmute for a Q&A. Thank you to tonight's featured sponsor, Gail Lee Homes. And if you enjoyed tonight's presentation, make sure to check out our website and register to join us again next week. Without further ado, Hillary, take it away. Thank you, Dottie. Well, hello, Poolsville seniors. I'm Hillary Schwab, and I am the Edible Garden Girl. Thank you inviting me, for inviting me back to talk to you about another amazing vegetable, zucchini. Tonight, I'm gonna to be demonstrating to you how to make zoodles um, with the Thai peanut sauce and also um, stuffed zucchini ribbons. So um, zucchini is a vegetable that causes a lot of confusion because all zucchini are squash, but not all squash are zucchini. Um, there's something on the screen, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> Thank you. So the term squash refers to plant species within the gourd family, which is further divided into winter squash and summer squash. So what's the difference between the two? Well, I thought it'd be complicated, but it's really not. Winter squash um, are varieties of squash like butternut, acorn, spaghetti squash that are physically hard. Um, so they have a, an exterior skin that you don't eat. So you have to peel them or um, remove, you know, somehow not eat the outside of the fruit. Um, but summer varieties um, are ones where you can eat anything but the stem. And this includes zucchini, patty squash, crook neck, um, or um, yellow squash. Now, the one thing that I've always had a really hard um, time discovering the difference between the two is the yellow squash and the yellow zucchini. Um, so I wanted to show you the difference with a yellow squash, but um, they didn't have any at the grocery store this time of year. Um, but the yellow squash has kind of like a, a bulbous bottom um, and it tapers off, you know, a little bit at the top. Um, and the yellow zucchini actually look like a yellow zucchini. They're a little bit more brighter, uh, darker orange, orangish yellow. Um, and that's basically the difference. This zucchini has small, a little bit smaller seeds. So <clears throat> I know you're all gonna be planting your own zucchini this year. Um, and I thought I would give you a couple of planting tips. Um, so you can plant zucchini in the ground. Um, Mother's Day is the rule of thumb for in this area for planting. And you can either start your plants inside, your seeds inside, or you can plant the seeds outside, or you can buy plants, which is what I usually do. Um, zucchini plants grow really big. Like they can grow up to like, is this three, three feet in diameter. So you gotta be really careful because you don't wanna crowd your zucchini. If you crowd them, then they get like mildew and mold or whatever, um, and you're not gonna get a good crop. So um, you can plant them individually. And one of the things that's um, unique about zucchini is that it has both male and female blossoms on one plant. So a lot of vegetables that you plant, you have to plant two so that they can cross pollinate. But the zucchini's got it all covered in the one plant. So I actually didn't realize until recently that there were male and female uh, squash blossoms. So um, I'm going to try to show you now so that you can look at the difference between the two. So first of all, the, um, let's see, can you guys, let's see if you can guys can see this. The, um, the female blossom is the one that grows off of the fruit. So when it's, it, and it grows very close to the bottom of the stem of the plant. The male blossom has kind of this long skinny stem and it never produces a fruit. And also from the inside of the flowers, this is the male flower here. It just has um, this, uh, the ant, what's it called again? Uh, I have it here somewhere. Anther, thank you. And, um, and is this the stamen? 
this stigma. stigma. Oh, so close. Anyway, so the female flower looks more like a yellow flower on the inside. So the pollen from the anthem goes over to the stigma from bees and whatever insects um, landing on the plant and it pollinates the female blossom and those become your zucchini squash. So the male blossom is basically once they've done their job, they just you know shrivel up and die. So one of the things that's a delicacy is to eat zucchini blossoms. Now I, I don't have any real blossoms here to show you because they're not, um, not in season yet, um, but the best blossoms to harvest are the male blossoms because they do not become zucchini. So um, you just gotta be careful that you don't pluck all the males off because then you're not gonna get any squash. Um, so, and I also personally have never cooked zucchini blossoms, but I understand they're amazing. Um, and I, you can, uh, I've been told two different ways to do it and I can't wait to do it this spring and I hope you guys try it too. You can just take the blossom and uh, batter it and deep fry it, or you can stuff it with cheese um, and then fry it. So basically, you know, it's fried. But everyone says it's delicious. I've never had it. Um, so if anyone has anything to add about that at the end, I'd love to hear it because I definitely um, want to try it out. Okay, so a few things to watch out for when you're growing zucchini. One of the most annoying pests that I've had in my zucchini over the years are um, the squash vine borers. So it's it's a very like a wasp-like uh, uh, moth, but you know, I've never seen one of those, but I've seen my plant starting to wilt. And if you see your plant kind of starting to wilt, look over by the bottom of the stem. And what happens is this moth lays its, its eggs and its larva grows inside the stems. And what you can do is you can, when you, you can see kind of where, where um, the stem is damaged, you can actually take a knife and cut open the stem and remove this bug. It's like this, this larva, it's like a big white larva with a brown head. Um, and then you can take that piece of the stem because it's usually close to the soil and cover it up with dirt and you can actually save your plant. I've done this several times. Um, it actually really works, who knew? Um, the other thing are squash bugs. They look a lot like stink bugs. I was like, why are the stink bugs all over my vegetables? But they're squash bugs and they love to eat the leaves and the leaves get brown and they wilt. And they lay these little tiny little brown eggs on the underneath of the leaves. So if you see your plants starting to be in distress, look underneath the leaves. Um, and if you see that they, 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 they um, have these eggs that grow in these nice little rows, you can just cut off the leaves that have the eggs and um, hopefully you can save your plants. So anyway, um, we're gonna move on to nutrition. I'm, I'm not an expert in this, but I'm gonna tell you that zucchini is really good for you. It's got a lot of nutrition in it. It's got vitamins and antioxidants. It's high in fiber and it's low in calories. So what's not to like? So now I'm ready to start cooking. So give me a second here. We're gonna make some room for all of the things that we're gonna cook with. Okay, start with these. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. Oh, it's too bad this isn't interactive because I'm does anybody know what this is? This is a zoodle maker. Um, if you go to my shop on my uh, blog, um, ediblegardengirl.com, um, there's a link there for, um, for this zoodle maker. I got it from Amazon. It was only $25. And it came with like a whole bunch of different um, size uh, cutting tools, um, but right now I'm doing kind of like, a, I'd say like a thin to medium spaghetti that I'm gonna um, make my zucchini. So I prefer not to cook my zoodles. Some people like to cook them, but I'm, I'm a uh, kind of a spaghetti snob and I like my noodles to be kind of al dente, kind of crunchy. So um, this dish that I'm gonna make for you right now is completely uncooked. So 
if it's a hot summer day and you just picked a couple of zucchini from your garden, you can just whip up this dish and you can have a nutritious, um, delicious, healthy meal without getting your kitchen all hot. So, let's see, we need all these things that are here. So first, I'm gonna make it so I can use the cutting board. So these are all the ingredients for the sauce, which we're gonna make in a minute. But first we're gonna make the zoodles. All right, so let's make sure you guys can see the cutting board. Okay. All right. So I need a knife. So the, I'm gonna show you how to make the zoodles. So here we have the zucchini. I'm gonna cut off the stem end and I'm gonna cut off the other end of the zucchini. So we have a nice cylinder. Okay, let me just do that for all three so we can get the cutting board out of the way. Okay, there we go. All right. <clears throat> so now, All you do, so I gotta have a, you need to have a bowl to catch your zoodles when they come out. Okay, I'm gonna pull this piece back. I'm going to insert the zucchini into the zoodle maker. There, I'm gonna press it in real good. I'm gonna kind of tighten this. This also has a suction thing that doesn't always work that helps it from moving around. Okay, I'm gonna hold it down and then I'm just gonna start turning. And the zoodles are gonna start coming out the other end. I think I'm gonna turn it actually so you guys can see. Make sure you can see the zucchini. The zoodles coming out, can you see it? There you go. All right. And that is literally all there is to it. Move this down. Yeah. WD forty or something. It's very squeaky. We're going. And you're at the end. And there you go. Well, they didn't exactly go in the bowl, but you get the idea. Okay. Then we're just gonna remove this one. We're gonna quickly zoodle up the other two and we'll make the sauce. So you put the zucchini in both ends, close it, and then I hope that the thing is gonna stay still. Noodles coming out. This is fun, right? Okay. That's not. Okay. All right. I kind of feel like Lucille Ball on that thing, you know, when she's on the conveyor belt. All right. Out. And the last one, and that should be plenty of zoodles for us. So these are three very small zucchini, but if you had two medium-sized zucchini, that would probably be enough. This recipe with the sauce. Music. I think that's probably plenty. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make the sauce. So just like pasta, these noodles are a great medium for whatever kind of sauce you're going to put on it. So this time I'm going to show you how to make a Thai peanut sauce. 
So I'm gonna need a bowl. So I put the bowl, and now I'm gonna put the ingredients into the bowl. So first we've got one cup of peanut butter. Now this recipe is on my blog. All right, one cup of peanut butter. And then one tablespoon of my favorite hot sauce, Vibracha. And if you don't like spicy, you can make it without the hot sauce. I like to give it a little bit of a kick. Okay, then I'm gonna add um, half a uh, quarter of a cup of fresh lime juice. I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of honey. While the honey's doing its thing, we're gonna add other things. We're gonna add, um, let's see. We're gonna add a third a cup of soy sauce. There we go. Um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to force the honey out of here. Okay. And the other thing, um, this is a really great tool. This is a, a microplane, and this is great for um, grating uh, the garlic and the ginger. <clears throat> so some people chop them, but I prefer to grate them because. It, since this doesn't get cooked, it really doesn't taste good when you get like a big old hunk of uh, ginger or um, garlic in your mouth. So it's better to just get the flavor of the garlic and the ginger. So I've got two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna microplane them in. That's one garlic, two garlics. You just rub it along the outside of it. You can also use this tool to zest lemons, limes, oranges, perfect for those kinds of things. Okay, so I got two garlics and then I need um, to get, I think like a, okay, two tablespoons of fresh ginger. That is a lot of ginger. So we're just gonna rub this on here till we get all the ginger in there. And yes, it makes a difference to use fresh ginger. Um, you just don't get the flavors with the dry ginger that you do with the fresh. Okay, just do a little more. Okay, probably about two tablespoons. I'm gonna get everything out of here. Put this into my dish. Now I think I've added everything. Oh, nope, I need some rice vinegar and some sesame oil. So um, I've got some sesame oil here. I want a couple of tablespoons of that. Get the sesame oil, that's one, two. And then I need some rice vinegar. Just need like a teaspoon of that. A teaspoon of that in there. So once I've gotten everything in here, I'm gonna whisk it up. I'm gonna whisk it up and then I'm gonna see how much water I need to add. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure everybody can see everything. See if I can whisk this without getting it all over me. All right, so you really gotta give it a good whisk so that all of the peanut butter is very thick. So I'm gonna give it a nice whisk. And I don't know if you guys can see, it's pretty darn thick. So we're going to add some water. So let's just see how it goes because you don't want to make it too thin. Nice mix. And then what you need to do is you need to taste it with your finger and then see if it needs anything. No, that's pretty good. 
Um, you know, sometimes if you like it a little sweeter, you can add a little more honey. If you like it a little more spicy, you can add more of this hot sauce. So um, you can just make it how you like it. And then all I do is toss your zoodles with your sauce. So I'm going to get a nice big spoon here. I'm gonna pour the sauce in. Right on top of my zoodles. And probably need a fork here. Wooden spoon is not going to do the trick. Okay, so now I'm going to toss it together. And you have dinner in about 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. I uh, it looks like it's kind of saucy, so um, I probably could have used more zucchini, but all I have were these little itty bitty baby ones. So, um, when you do it, be careful adding the sauce, if, you know, because once you add too much sauce, you can't take it out. Um, and then I'm going to sprinkle just some green onions on top. Another thing you could add would be sesame seeds, um, if, you, if you like sesame seeds. And there you go. You have dinner. Okay. So who's ready to make stuffed zucchini ribbons? I know I am once I clean up my mess here. So give me a second, guys. Is everybody getting hungry? Okay, so zucchini ribbons. The good news is for zucchini ribbons, you don't need as fancy a tool to make them as you do to make the zoodles. Okay, so now where is the, okay, so. What happened to all the zucchini? Oh, there it is. Sorry guys. All right, now I got my zucchini. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the zucchini ribbons and then I'm gonna show you how to stuff them and then we'll bake them. So we're gonna cut off the stems again. Put this over here. Okay, now this is the cool gadget I have. I got it from a grocery store. I'm thinking you guys can really see it. It's basically, it's just a vegetable peeler, but it's a wide one. So vegetable peelers are usually the other direction, but these are really good. It almost looks like a cheese grater, but it's a vegetable peeler. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off the top piece of skin and discard that, set that to the side. And then I'm gonna start making my zucchini ribbons. So I'm just gonna take the vegetable peeler and I'm gonna make a ribbon. I'm gonna put it in this strainer here that I have in this pot because um, zucchini uh, holds a lot of liquid. So <clears throat> we need to get some of the liquid out of the zucchini or your zucchini ribbon, stuffed zucchini ribbons are gonna be floating in water. So I'm just gonna put that there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make my ribbons. I'm just gonna show you how to make a bunch of ribbons, then I'm gonna show you how to make the stuffing and then how to stuff them. So you do it on one side, then you turn it over. I'm gonna do it on the other side. Now these are incredibly tiny zucchini. So when I, um, when I make my stuffed zucchini ribbons, I'm gonna use three strips at a time. But if you had bigger zucchini, you could use two. If you had a massive zucchini, you could you know, maybe just use one. Um, 
You don't use the seed part. You just use the flesh part. Now these are very tiny. They don't even have seeds. They're so um, they're so incredibly young. Okay, well that one didn't come out good. Okay, let me just do a couple more so that I can show you how to stuff them. It gets a little harder when you get these tiny little itty bitty zucchinis. Yeah, that one, that one had a problem. Here, we'll do this one. Just do a couple more. Okay. I bet you can't wait to have fun in the kitchen like I am. Okay. So do a few more here. Do this. And one more. All right. That'll probably be enough. So I'm going to put them in this strainer here. And then if I was baking this dish tonight, I would um, I would put kosher salt on top of it and then I would let it sit for like half an hour. And you kind of turn the strainer and the liquid comes out with the zucchini. So once you've done that, when it sat for about half an hour, you rinse the zucchini off and then you pat it dry with a paper towel. So then we're gonna, I'm gonna just set this aside. And I'm gonna show you how to make the, um, the stuffing. So once again, I need another bowl. Okay. Okay. So here's what goes into the stuffing. So you're gonna take a container of ricotta cheese, put a clean spoon. Good thing my kitchen's right here, right? All right. So. Here we go, the, ricotta, the whole container of ricotta. Now, it's gonna be hard for me to tell you how many zucchini you need to have to make this dish because they're all different sizes. So um, I'll show you, I, I have one that I've already completed that I'm gonna show you, um, <clears throat> but you might end up having either some extra uh, stuff, cheese stuffing, or you might end up having some extra um, zucchini. So it's kind of hard to <clears throat> quantify it since it's a little bit, they're all different sizes. Okay, so I've got um, ricotta cheese in there. Now I'm going to add the mozzarella cheese. So I've got eight ounces of mozzarella cheese already shredded to make my life easier. Get that in the bowl. Then I have um, a quarter cup of shredded Parmesan. I'm going to add to that. Um, I've got an egg that I'm going to add to that. There we go, I've got an egg. Okay, I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Salt. With pepper. And I happen to have here some fresh oregano that I dried from my oregano plant in my front yard from last summer, so I still have some goodness from the garden. Um, oregano is one of those um, herbs that tastes really good dry. So just gonna crushing my oregano a little bit. Really wanna have some good oregano flavor in there. Okay. And then I'm gonna mix it all up. <clears throat> So while your um, zucchini is draining, you can be making this um, cheese mixture. Now this cheese mixture is very similar to something that um, I would use for making stuffed shells. So you could use it to stuff pasta, but I'm trying to go gluten-free and to show you um, ways, different ways that maybe you wouldn't think of to use your summer zucchini when you have it from your garden. I mean, of course, you know, the simplest way is to grill it um, or skewer it, but um, this is just, you know, some other options for when you get tired of the same old thing. Okay, so looks like our cheese mixture is all ready to go. Okay, so now um, the other thing 
that I'm going to tell you about, but I'm probably not going to do with this particular demo, is so I have a, a larger baking dish that's um, in the oven right now, but um, I'm just going to show you in this dish a sample of how to make this. Um, so because the zucchini is so wet, I um, have figured out that you really need to add just a tablespoon or two of um, tomato paste to your tomato sauce to keep everything from being, you know, like a river. So the first thing you're going to do is mix some of your tomato sauce with a little bit of the tomato paste, which I said I'm not going to do right now. So I don't want to take the time for that, but you put your tomato sauce in a layer on the bottom of your tray. Get even it out. Okay, so we got the tomato sauce on the bottom. That's oh, got a good tomato. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, let me get a paper towel to dry my ribbons. So I have my ribbons that have been salted, rinsed, and now I'm gonna dry them. Now it looks like things are blocking. Make it so you guys can see. Okay, all right. So this is what I'm gonna do. I've dried my ribbons. I'm gonna take three ribbons. I'm gonna put them next to each other like this. So it's kind of um, staggered. I'm gonna take the cheese mixture and I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of cheese to my ribbons. Like I said, if you have bigger zucchini, you can probably do it with two ribbons. Um, or if you had a really big one, you could do it with one. But I think actually this makes a beautiful presentation. So I'm going to roll it up. So you can hopefully see that. Roll it up. Oh, that messed up. Roll it up. And then I'm going to put it in the tomato sauce. So like that. Then I'm going to continue doing that until I have the whole tray filled up or I run out of either cheese or run out of zucchini. Okay, so do it again so you can watch it again. So there's this. I think my dog wants some. Okay, then you use a tablespoon of cheese cheese mixture, you put it inside your zucchini, and then you just roll it up. It's kind of like manicotti, if anybody knows what that is. Okay, and then you put it in your, your tray like that. What are we doing on time? Okay, I'm gonna do one more for you, and then I'm gonna show you what the, I have a finished product in, in the oven to show you. All right, so then we got this one. We're gonna roll it up. Okay, put it in here. Okay, so as you can see, this makes a beautiful presentation. So once you have gotten all of your uh, ribbons rolled up and stuffed with cheese, you're gonna put foil on top of the tray and you're gonna bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes are up, then you're gonna take the foil off because you really wanna um, get a chance for all that moisture to evaporate. And then about 20 minutes into that, you're gonna take, uh, take it out of the oven. You're gonna put some tomato sauce on top and a thin layer of some shaved Parmesan and you're gonna bake it for like another 10 minutes and then your dish is ready. So let's see what it looks like. Roll. Okay. Oh, thank you. And here you go. This one, unfortunately, I left it in the oven too long while I was uh, doing my presentation. Um, so it looks a little overcooked, but it still looks pretty good, I think. And I think you guys get the gist of it. So, and it doesn't look runny to me at all. So I think I, I, I did a good job on that this time around. 
Okay, so inevitably when you grow zucchini or your neighbors grow zucchini or anybody in the world grows zucchini, usually you have tons and tons of zucchini. So the last thing that I'm gonna talk to you about is zucchini bread. So I may have the zucchini bread, thank you. So here I have a zucchini bread that I um, baked yesterday um, to show you um, because basically if you call this dish bread, you can eat it for breakfast, <laughs> even though it tastes like cake. So that's, that's my uh, theory and I'm gonna stick to it. So the reason I wanted to show you the zucchini bread is I haven't put it on my blog yet, but I've adapted um, my favorite zucchini bread recipe um, to um, have a little bit more of like a sandy pecan kind of uh, flavor. So instead of walnuts, I use pecans. Um, and instead of all white sugar, I add some brown sugar uh, to replace some of that white sugar. And instead of all white flour, I add some whole wheat flour to it to give it a little bit more body and make it, you know, healthy. So um, yeah, so uh, please look. Um, you know, for my recipes that will be coming up on my blog. If you have, if you don't subscribe, you should subscribe because um, about once every week or two, I'll send out um, an email with my latest posts and you'll get to see the recipes. Um, like I said, uh, the ribbon recipe is not on the blog yet, but that will be coming up in the next week or so, as well as the zucchini bread. And um, Thank you so much for watching my presentation today. I hope you've learned something new, at least something about zucchini blossoms. And um, I'm happy to take any questions. Feel free to either unmute and ask questions or put them in the chat. I also want to point out, I went ahead and put the link to Hillary's website and blog in the chat. So be sure to check her out as well. Oh, also, you, if, you, if you're not into subscribing to blogs, you can um, like my page on Facebook, at Edible Garden Girl. Hillary, Smells I really have, good. <laughs> I have a question, Hillary, um, okay. about, about the ginger. Uh -huh. I've never used fresh ginger before. So, okay. all right, so um, I wouldn't even know how do you get started with that? How to peel it? What parts do you have to peel off in order to use it? Where did it go? Do you know where it is? We're gonna find it so I can show you. No? No. Hmm. Can't be far away. It should be over there. Um, so anyway, ginger has um, like a brown uh, uh, skin, I guess, on the outside. It's a root. And so you peel off, you can use a vegetable peeler to peel off the skin. Um, and then you can eat all of, all of the inside of the root. I have a piece in my freezer here. Hold on. I, because, you know, it's a fresh thing, I freeze it. I cut it into pieces usually, which I did not do with this big chunk, but I freeze it. So this is the brown, you know, skin that's on the outside and you peel it and inside is yellow. And um, so it was very kind of hard to use that, um, that planer because my ginger had already started defrosting. But if you use it while it's frozen or if it's fresh, um, you can really do a good job with getting a, a, a good um, clean thing. What's it called? Yeah. So, but you can also chop it, you can slice it. Um, it has like a really strong flavor and it really adds um, some really good notes to a, an Asian dish. Oh, I had another question. I, I think these recipes are great and I'm so excited and I can't wait to try, but I always have a lot of questions before I get started with something. Um, and I don't mean to monopolize, so somebody else can, you know, say stop. <laughs> but um, as far as the peanut butter, do you have a recommendation as to what type to use? Um, all creamy, I imagine, right? <laughs> 
I like um, to use creamy, chewy. but you could use chunky if you wanted. I mean, I just happen to have Jif in my yeah. house, but yeah. you know, there's a lot of sugar in Jif. So if you yeah, I was gonna say like all natural, have you tried to make it with an all natural peanut butter at all? I haven't, but I'm sure that would be better for you. <laughs> Yep, definitely would be better for you. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Okay, sure. I'm curious about the differences that you find between getting the sauce to stick to the zucchini and the zucchini noodles versus like what it would be like cooking a normal pasta dish. Is that like pre-processing and like washing and drying them really important? Or is it more about how you put the sauce together? Are you talking about for the ribbons? Yeah. So the the reason that I went through that whole um, thing about the uh, you know straining of the ribbons with the salt and then rinsing them and drying them is that zucchini holds a lot of water, and if you don't if you don't do any of that, your dish is just going to be floating in water. So. Um, the sauce, you know, sticks to it just like, you know, it would stick to pasta. But the main reason for all that uh, processing is to um, keep it from being a, a river or a lake. <laughs> so we're good. No more questions? Feel free to either unmute or put them in the chat. Is anybody, um, is anybody gonna grow zucchini? Has anybody ever made zucchini blossoms? My grandmother used to. Jane, have you ever made zucchini blossoms? I have not, but I am intrigued. This was great, Hillary. Lots of inspiration. Thanks for doing this. Awesome. Do you grow zucchini? I don't, but I have not, but I buy it a lot at the markets around, you know, all the farm markets and stuff. And so definitely easy to get, if, um, but it's great if you can grow it for sure. Well, I mean, if you want to eat, if you want to try to eat the flowers, I don't know. I've never seen them in the grocery store. Yeah. Um, they might be there. Yeah. You know, there's probably like one week of the year where you can find them. Maybe I see so. My mom in the chat saying that the squirrels steal all of her zucchini blossoms, so maybe they're a little <laughs> bit harder to come by. <laughs> yeah, the squirrels are a nuisance, but um, I have like in, in my garden, I put up a netting around the outside of the garden, so the squirrels are very frustrated. Do you have any other zucchini. tips about things you can do to be most successful growing zucchini? Um, the most important thing is that they need a lot of room to grow. Like, you know, you get this little plant and it's got like these two little leaves and then it grows to like this big. So, you know, if you plant a, a bunch of them in a small space, they're not gonna grow well and they're gonna get like mildew and rot and you're not gonna have success. So you really need to have space if you're gonna grow zucchini. Oh, I thought of another question. How how long once you've made the zoodles do you think they last in your fridge? I would say not terribly long. Okay. Um, it's a pretty. Do they have to? Do they have to be prepared same day, Hillary, or can yeah. they overnight or no? Yeah, I've had them like left over the next day, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go day two or three okay. because espe especially when you mix it with this like that peanut sauce, the noodles get very it, everything just gets like wet and slimy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a pretty fragile vegetable. So if you have a lot of leftover zucchini, you can make zucchini bread and you can freeze it. It freezes really well. If 
how do you prepare your zucchini bread like do you put anything on it normally like just butter or do you is it more sweet so you put jams on it um well my recipe is very sweet so um it doesn't need anything but you can put like butter on it if you want like i said if you if you want to pretend it's like a breakfast food you can put some butter on it and pretend you're eating toast but it it, it kind of is it's very cake like my particular recipe I've had other zucchini breads that is that aren't quite as sweet. And you'll be posting it on your blog soon, you said? Yes. Awesome. Do we have any last questions? Well, it's pretty much, I think it's pretty much time. Yes, I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. We always love having you back. And I think your live cooking demonstrations are some of my favorite. I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's presentation as much as I did and learned something new about zucchini. I hope you all try out these recipes and check out Hillary's blog and Facebook page. As always, if you have any questions later, you can always email us at info at poolsvillesenews.org and we can pass them on for you. And if you'd like to unmute or turn on your camera now to say goodbye, now's the time. Thank if you're you. joining us on Facebook Live, please leave a like and a comment. We'd like to thank Hillary for this presentation, as well as Scott for his camera work, <laughs> as well as our ongoing sponsors and private contributors that help us keep our programs going because we love putting them on for you. If you enjoyed tonight's program, please consider joining us for more upcoming events. We'll be back this time next week with Kenny Scholl's Historic Property Lecture. As always, you can go to our website, PoolsvilleSeniors.org, for more info and registration for all our events. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thank Hillary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.